Now on four, Phil Liggett looks back on today's action in the penultimate stage of the Tour of Britain. city of Birmingham, England's number two city in the heart of the Midlands where the Kellogg's tour arrived yesterday and here this morning now faces the penultimate day of this 668 miles race. The longest day in prospect, the hilliest day in prospect, we should see some decisions made today. Now if you followed our coverage nightly here throughout the week since the race began in Newcastle then you'll know that Malcolm Elliott has been the only leader of the race. He wore the yellow jersey after winning that time trial stage in Newcastle. Later in the day, he was the winner again in the city of York. And it has appeared since then that his challenge has come from Liverpudlian Joey McLaughlin. But of course, there are 13 riders, all within easy reach of Elliott. In fact, only 58 seconds covering the lot. Let's have a look then at the overall situation. Right on top of the pile still, Malcolm Elliott. In second place, chasing him very hard at 19 seconds is Joey McLaughlin. Third place, Sean Yates. Fourth place, the world champion, Stephen Roach. And now making a challenge at last there, coming up the table very quickly, Sean Kelly. Kelly has improved dramatically over this week from an early placing of 10th. One man missing now from our top 10 overall is Ronan Pensek. A broken frame on the road to Stoke has put him out of the overall hunt. There are others challenging as well. And at the bottom of the top 13 riders, only 58 seconds behind the leader, Elliot, is Mauro Gianetti, the Swiss climber. Well, any one of these riders could reverse the tables because a minute in a race of this distance is certainly nothing at all. Who better to ask then as to who will lead the Kellogg's Tour tonight than the riders themselves? Well, I think it's such a long day today and anything can happen and I really don't want to say. I hope it's going to be me. Vigo rider. Which one? Wait and see. I'd have a guess that I think Elliot will be leader tonight. Uh, because number one, he's a very strong team, and number two, they're uh, in a good position. The Fagel team, they have three riders up there, so I, I think you know he will hold on to the jersey today. I think it's going to be um, Malcolm Elliott, no troubles. Um, it's very difficult to say, but I hope, hopefully Malcolm Elliott will be. But there are so many riders still in contention that it's going to be very, very tight in Bristol tonight. Some say Stephen Rose tonight. They're liars. <laughs> they know something I don't know. <laughs> Well, we'll know the answers in about eight or nine hours' time at the end of this ride, but one competition that certainly ends today because there are no hills on Westminster Bridge tomorrow is the King of the Mountains title. Now, Mauro Gianetti started out this week as the leader, taking on Chris Lillywhite in the early parts of the action. But since then, it's been Sean Kelly, the Irishman, who seems to be putting in a determined challenge for this championship. He's closed the gap now on Gianetti to just five points and so today with a lot of points available this could become a marvelous battle and it wouldn't surprise me if sean kelly doesn't come out on top he's a rider who doesn't like the big climbs of the pyrenees and the alps but does seem to be enjoying the british hillside this week well our man paul mcdowell he's never seen a start of the race all week he's missed this one again this morning so let's go out now along the route and see where he is i wonder if you recognize this idyllic cottage phil it was to hear that the young William Shakespeare would take a walk on an autumn evening to seek the hand of Anne Hathaway. And now around half a million visitors come here every year. Well, Stratford-upon-Avon is one of many tourist attractions which this stage will pass through today. Now, we all know that classic line from the Merchant of Venice, the quality of mercy is not strained. Well, mercy obviously didn't enter into the mind of those who planned today's stage. It's 151 miles, the toughest to date, it includes two Category 1 climbs, three Category 2 climbs. Now, obviously, the riders will have little time to enjoy the beauty spots which it passes through, like Cheddar Gorge and Bath. And we reckon, too, Phil, that this is the day when the midsummer night dream of many of the riders will, in fact, end. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Well, here we are, back in the start here in Birmingham. <laughs> and it looks like wheel trouble already there for the world champion, Stephen Roach, as they roll away. And the last man onto his bicycle here, Jan Eric Ostergaard from the Isoglass team. Over the flyover. This, uh, I understand, was the very first flyover ever built in Britain. 
as we make our way out of Birmingham. Sean Kelly in early trouble. No need to hurry just yet because despite the 151 miles today, a gentle meander of 10 miles first. And that, by the way, makes the day 161, of course, but the time only taken when this uh, flag is pulled in and it is now the official start of the day. And it seems while the Tour of Britain goes one way, there is a different type of tour going the other way today with the steam locomotives heading to a rally. Steve Jones, the first rider to attack, and Jones is a local boy here from just outside of Birmingham, and this is causing reaction from Sean Yates. And Yates has been a strong man this week, and they've wiped up Steve Jones here. A little bit of a split forming. And this is the sprint in Henley and Arden, the TV time sprint. Malcolm Elliott taking three seconds bonus here, beating Vetmuller. And in fact, that is wrong because Elliott was given the victory. Vetmuller was in second place. The main field going by, not too far behind. And it looks now a little bit of sadness here because behind the field, the British champion Steve Jockin, with injuries uh, which occurred a couple of days ago, is calling it a day. And that is sad because Jockin, in fact, that when he came to Birmingham last year in the Kellogg's Tour, was the stage winner. Now down to Stratford, and the field still uh, keeping itself together. The odd flurry of attacks coming and going, but nobody breaking away. Elliott's got himself three very valuable seconds at that first sprint. This is the second TV time sprint. And we've got in the centre of the picture in the yellow there, Walsham dropping away, but coming now in the white jersey and challenging him, in fact, is Mark Walsham. Nick Barnes in white, the TV Times leader is on top, Walsham second, and Steve Jones was third there, so that's very, very good news indeed for Barnes. And now we've got a mechanical problem here at the back, and it looks as though Stephen Roach is still making phone calls in this race, the second time in three days. Happy days phoning home. And now we look down from our helicopter here over one of the most beautiful villages in England in the Cotswolds, the village of Broadway. But any racing cyclist knows the blue flag here indicates the very steep climb away from Broadway, Paul, is Fish Hill. Yes, and this is our first real big counting event, counting climb today for the King of the Mountains. You can see the two contenders on the front there, Chris Lillywhite and uh, Gionetti from the La Suisse Wyman team. So it's a twisting climb, it's quite steep. We've got there in the centre of the picture in the half colours, uh, Chris Lillywhite, who is in the early attacks on this climb. This looks like Keith Reynolds, in fact, attacking very, very strongly, pulling away from the main field here. Lillywhite reacts very, very well indeed. Lillywhite takes over. And Stephen Hodge in the yellow almost fallen off there. But Hodge comes through on Lily White. Lily White still having a lot of fight in the mountain, despite the fact now he has really no hope of pulling off the overall championship. Here's the result of the first climb. Lily White wins it. Hodge is second, and Keith Reynolds a very good third place. And in the top three there, notably, wasn't the uh, climbing leader, Gianetti. And there's a good vantage point for some here as they look out at the Kellogg's tour. Steve Sefton coming now into Cheltenham. Mark Walsham, narrowly beaten in the one at Stratford, is in the lead of uh, those two Bilton riders, being led out here well by his Bilton teammates. Uh, but watch this, because this is the white jersey of the leader, Nick Barnes. He said this morning he feels he's as quick as Walsham in the sprint finish. Well, let's see. Walsham's chasing him down here now as Barnes goes for the sprint. Walsham's into his slipstream. That's good for Mark Walsham. Walsham really is the fast sprinter, and Walsham comes over Nick Barnes, so this is a great competition now. Walsham gets it this time from Barnes, that's a 1-2 each way round so far today. This one's for Walsham, Barnes, and Sean Yates there gets a one-second bonus. That competition, you know, is going to have a great finale in Westminster tomorrow. Sean Yates at the feeding station, it looks as though he doesn't know what to do with it, Paul. Well, actually, what's happened here is... Uh as Sean's gone through, he's making sure that he, uh, he takes up the bag and he takes it really rather than take it by the strap because they're very fragile. He's actually taking it by the bag itself so as not to lose their food on a, on a long day like this. It's vital not to lose the food bag. Whole field together then, out of the feeding station now. There are in fact two feeding stations today because the race is such a long one. And now notice the incline of the trees in the distance there. This is Birdlip. A vicious climb away from Gloucestershire, the first category climb of the day. Joey McLaughlin, I would have thought, might want an attack here. 
Well, Phil, this is a climb that in the past has been used for many in many races to launch an, an attack for uh, for winning breakaways. Stephen Hodge uh, leading Malcolm Elliott, Joey McLaughlin. We've had reports all day that there is an enormous crowd towards the top of this climb, by the way. It's a very narrow climb under the best of conditions. Frederic Bichot leading up on the group here. And Stephen Hodge, uh, quite a climber this week in second place, the Australian teammate of Sean Kelly in the Cass Sport Life team. And Lily White also on the left of our picture, that familiar style when he's out of the saddle, swinging around on the bicycle. Also in the green there, Joey McLaughlin. And somebody beginning to move up too on the outside of the bunch here, trying to get up with the leaders. Slipped up a gear, continues the attack. This is an attack then going as one of the Zeb Peugeot riders puts in an attack in the trees. It looks like Henri Abadie, twice a winner of the King of the Mountains title this year in two of Europe's major races. And now Abadie is trying to go clear. And they seem to have let him go at the moment. Quite frankly, I'm not too sure they could do anything about it. Robert Miller at the front now to try and whip up the field here behind. And Giannetti on the far side in that white jersey, the leader of the King of the Mountains. Noticeably, though, we haven't seen too much of Sean Kelly today, and I really felt that Kelly was putting in a bid for this title. Giannetti, uh, if he can gather some points on this climb, will be making safe that King of the Mountains competition because that ends today. There's no hills tomorrow in the city of London. Well, Phil, as you notice here, uh, Malcolm Elliott is very, keeping a very close eye on Joey McLaughlin because today's the day that Joey's going to try and surprise Malcolm, and there he's already marking his man. Well, McLaughlin really has got to get rid of Elliott uh, if he is going to win this Kellogg's Tour, and Elliott making sure McLaughlin doesn't get an inch. Still a little bit higher up the climb now. In the far distance over his shoulder is Gloucester, and Aberdeen little look over his shoulder too and the progress is slow but sweet as he makes his way up towards the summit of Birdlip where we understand this marvelous crowd is awaiting he's been quite a revelation this year Aberdeen uh, nobody really had heard of him until this year he had a very good Tour de France and now we've seen him in the action every day uh, this week in the Kellogg's Tour he's suffering now though as he tries to keep the rhythm high the style of a climber and it's working He's going clear, and we're obviously getting near the summit because the crowd line now is beginning to filter past this man, Henri Abadie. Into the shade of the trees. Well, Paul, this is looking good. Well, this is a good move by Abadie. This is the same kind of move that he did in the Tour de France on the third stage when he went clear and took a long time of uh, a long a long uh, he was away for a long time and he earned himself the uh, the mountains jersey for quite some days well here are the crowds in britain he could be climbing a stage now in the tour de france let's just enjoy the atmosphere for a moment You saw those pictures, and I'm sure Aberdeen will have a memory of that because a lot of people in France, especially the racing cyclists, believe that cycling has no following in Britain. Ho oh ho! Well, over the top then. Aberdeen gets maximum points. He's no real challenger, though, to this man, Giannetti, in the King of the Mountains. And Giannetti now is riding well to try and score maximum points that's left behind because his only rival here is Kelly. Kelly, as you can see, not scoring there on Birdlip. It's Aberdeen who gets the points. Giannetti now will be feeling a little bit safe in that competition. 